ladies and gentlemen. This is Soap the Great with another practical Minecraft tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to be building a combination iron and gold farm. Now if you look at this right behind me you will note that it is much larger than any of the previous tutorials that I have done in the series. It is large, it has a high material cost and we will look at that later, but it is immensely practical. You get iron ingots and gold nuggets out of it and we will talk about that a little bit more. We'll also talk about the overall rates but not only is it practical, it is possible. In fact, I just completed one in my multiplayer series. Now before we get started, because it is such a large build, we need to split this tutorial up into a couple of parts. Now on screen you should see a table of contents and that is going to have links that you can click on to skip ahead to the various pieces if you wish to uh, just move around to whichever one you might need at the moment. And don't worry, once the links go off the screen you will be able to click on them in the description below. So that is it for the introduction. Let's take a look at the farm overall. Alright, we are now looking at the overall structure of the farm itself and this section here is what generates the iron golems and the zombie pigmen. It is a standard single cell iron golem farm. It has one village with 16 villagers and overall 48 doors in that village. On average it's going to generate an iron golem every six minutes and each iron golem gives an average of four ingots per golem. So on average you can expect out of this farm every hour 40 ingots, 40 iron ingots. You can increase the efficiency by doing additional cells higher up and if you follow the tutorial that I will link in the description from DocM77 you can go out that way as well. But in this particular one we are just doing a single cell and that's what is based on the DocM77 tutorial which is actually a JL2579 design. Now before we go any further I must say that this idea is not original to me. I saw this idea on Reddit from a user by the name of William Goosen. I will link his post in the description. His design and my design differ slightly. Um, I took his design and uh, just put the portals on top of a standard iron farm. He built large, the larger portals and put an iron farm under them. So there is a bit of a difference there and uh, we will look at the different kill mechanisms for the mobs a little bit later. But for now let's talk a little bit more about what the other parts of this farm here. As you can see there are a number of nether portals on the top. In fact there are eight large ones and two small ones. The large ones are 18 by 21. It is the maximum height you can get. It is not the maximum width however. The maximum width or the width for this particular one has been chosen to fit within the iron farm superstructure completely without any overlap because if there was overlap the sky access for those doors on the sides would be blocked and there would be no more village so there would be no more iron golems. Now let's talk about the averages for the pigmen. Now if the portal is in an active loaded chunk each portal block that's each purple square is going to receive a game tick and on every game tick the portal is going to pick a number between 0 and 2000 and if that number happens to be below your difficulty setting which is 0 for peaceful, 1 for easy, 2 for normal, 3 for hard, if that random number is below your difficulty setting a zombie pigment will be generated in that portal in that portal block rather. Now the reason you want to use these large portals is because for every 
obsidian on the width and on the height there's going to be one portal block so in here there's 18 by 21 which gives 378 per large portal and then on the sides there are 2 by 21 so 42 84 total on both of the small ones and total in this system there are 3108 portal blocks so for every game tick every one of those portal blocks is going to pick a number between 0 and 2000 and because I have the difficulty currently set on easy let's change it up to normal on normal since the difficulty setting would be 2 out of 2000 it's going to have a chance of spawning a pigment one every one thousandth chance so having three thousand one hundred eight portal blocks gives us a chance of spawning three zombie pigmen on average per game tick Now, the other caveat here is that not all of the zombie pigmen will start falling because they have to move around that's part of the design of the system you will see as we get close they walk around only at a certain point if you are not within 32 blocks they will not walk around so that means they will not fall down so you must be within 32 blocks now you can have the chunks loaded and not be within 32 blocks and it will spawn pigmen but they will stay up in the portal they will not move around so part of this design will also involve building an AFK spot so that you can just sit there and wait for the pigment to spawn and walk off alright now uh, the other the other caveat to keep in mind is that on a multiplayer server if you build this in the spawn chunks all of the portal blocks will be loaded however they will not spawn pigment unless somebody is close by um, otherwise they'll despawn um, additionally the iron farm will continue going if it's in the spawn chunks um, and there are a number of other videos out there about spawn chunks and calculating spawn chunks I will link one in the description I will also link the tutorial for the docm iron farm and also the William Goosen reddit post just to give credit where credit is due so that is it for the overview of the system all right let's take a look at the drops that come out of this particular farm now the portals can spawn adult zombie pigmen baby zombie pigmen and zombie pigmen pigmen chicken jockeys so the chicken jockeys can produce eggs so that is one possible drop out of this farm additionally you get poppies from the iron golems zombie flesh gold nuggets from the zombie pigmen iron ingots from the iron golems and the way this farm is set up and we will see that in just a moment as we are building the thing we'll see cooked chicken and feathers now let's take we'll actually have to get an egg out here and we'll see what happens okay so when a zombie pigman chicken jockey spawns what's going to happen is that it will float down from there instead of taking fall damage like the rest of the zombie pigman it will just float down and eventually the baby zombie pigman will despawn leaving a chicken behind now when that chicken being a chicken lays an egg what's going to happen you will see ready the system automatically detects that an egg has popped through the sorter and when it does it lights the kill floor on fire using these dispensers and flints and steel and that will cook the chicken which is why we can get cooked chicken and feathers out of the system so that is it for the main mob drops um, additionally any other thing that may drop through hopefully nothing else but there is overflow protection for that built into this particular design we will not be building this Cadillac design we'll just be sorting out the eggs 
and sending the rest into a catch-all chest or series of chests rather. So that is enough about the farm itself and we need to get on to building it. So let's do that now. Okay, now we are ready to build this. Before we get into building, we need to talk about siting the build. Now, in this world, over that way, you can see it. It's over there. If you were to build another of these iron farms within 65 blocks, you would ruin both of them because the villagers in one and the other would detect each other and the villages would merge and your iron golems would start piling up in the middle of the two. And you don't want that, you want them piling up in the middle of each superstructure. So you need to be at least 65 blocks away from any other village and that um, is covered in a number of other tutorials but for now just just keep them away, 65 away from any doors essentially. Another aspect of the sighting that we need to keep in mind is zombie pathing. Okay, Zombies can currently search up to 40 blocks around them and they will find the player and villagers. Okay, So we want to put this up high. The Docum 77 tutorial has you go up 10. Instead of going up 10 you need to go up 40 from any from the highest point of terrain around okay so 40 that also gives us enough room for the kill and storage platform okay with that in mind let's take a look at the materials this is a rather large build and in fact it takes up three double chests roughly of material I will open each one I'm not going to explain them in depth I will leave them long enough for a screenshot. These are pretty close estimates. It's based on an MC edit analysis and so you may have some left over if you go according to this. Okay, so there's the first chest. We'll go to the top one real quick. Don't mind the spawn villager egg. That is not available in survival. And doors. This is going to change in version 1.8. In 1.8 doors can stack and so that's 48 doors total right there taking up almost one entire double chest. They would fit in that block in the 1.8 version that is soon to come out. But for now one by one. Alright so first what we want to do is go up 40. So I'm going to do that and I will bring you back when I get there. Alright, we are now 40 in the air. What we want to do is we want to make a platform that is 20 by 20. So let's do that real quick. Let's outline and let's fill that in. Okay, I will bring you back when that's done. Alright, before we go much further I do need to make a note. You do not have to build this out of stone brick. This is just a solid block of your choice. I happen to be using stone brick because it's fairly easy to get a hold of and it differentiates itself from some of the other blocks that we need in this build um, and we will see that as we get to the collection area but uh, again any solid block of your choice you can use for this so keep that in mind I am using stone brick in this tutorial so now we've got the 20 by 20 platform what we want to do is build a wall three high all the way around okay so on all the edges and leaving an 18 by 18 space in the middle okay I will bring you back once that is done alright now we want to place the water for this lower platform but before we do that let's put three blocks in each corner like so and 
Now I would suggest not using this same stone. I would suggest using something like dirt because you want to remove this when you're done. Okay. So now what we want to do is go along the side and we want to fill this in with water and you can use the trick where you just go two water sources beside each other. Now do not fill in water sources on every corner because what will happen is the entire thing will get flooded with water source blocks. You will have a very difficult time at that point. Um, you will have to remove every one of them. So again just along the sides here leaving those three in the in the corners and we'll come back to those in just a moment. Let's fill in all of the water and I will show you what you're looking for once you're done. Okay, so we're still filling in this side. Okay, now what we want to do is put a water source block at the top of this corner and then knock out those blocks. Okay, that's why you want something like dirt because it's a lot more difficult in survival to knock out stone especially when fighting against a water current so use dirt or sand or something to that effect alright this is what you're looking for and now you should see a 2 by 2 hole in the middle of no water okay we will come back to this later that's where the iron golems and the pigmen will drop through but for now we just want to leave it as is and that's probably the last step that you want to do in your particular case so that uh, in case you do happen to fall in you won't fall and um, and will have a, another tick on your death counter if you happen to be building this on a server that's counting that so another thing that we want to do is make sure that other stuff doesn't spawn in here so we'll just torch it up okay and you know how that goes I don't have to bring you along for all that so we will be back with the next part in just a moment alright the place is made safe from other mob spawns so what we're going to do now is build up the door area so you want to go too high on each corner just like that and then we'll start placing doors okay so against every corner you want to put six doors okay and then between them you want to put six let's make sure one two three four five six good that means we got the platform correct as well so that's the structure you're looking for and we want to copy that on all four sides so we will be back once that is done alright all four sides have now been covered with doors so what we want to do now is fill in the back portion or actually the top platform So we'll come out here and we're just going to fill in behind the doors all the way around okay and that should be an 18 by 18 platform and I will bring you back once that is done alright that platform is done this is going to be the top spawning platform for the iron golems so we do need to build a bit of a wall for them and for the water to be contained but in the iron golem farm the standard design you would go up two on the wall and that's where we're going to change things up a bit because we want to put a set of portals right on top and we need to leave enough room for the iron golems to flow on through so we're gonna we're gonna be sure to give them enough room and we're going to go up an additional two so we need a four high wall all the way around and I will bring you back when I have completed that step all 
Alright, that top wall is done. And what we're going to do is we're going to come back in here and same as we did in the bottom section, we're going to fill in the corners and then do water all the way along and then water in the top corner here and knock these blocks out. I will bring you back when that is done. Alright, the water is done on this platform. Again, I am going to leave that section in and we will come back and remove that later once we get the farm really ready to go. So right now we're just going to build it and then we will set it to go at a later step. But now what we need to do is make a little pocket on all four sides for the villagers and it's just going to be pretty small. We'll just do four on the side there, come out two. Okay, and fill this in to a width of six, and we're going to knock that one block out. Okay, and we want to go up one further, and that is to make sure that we can put a covering on these villagers once they're done. An additional safety precaution I would put a, at least one torch. Okay, um, another thing we want to do is slab the top so that nothing spawns up here and we're going to do that on all four sides and I just remembered we'll need to put in torches along here too kind of like in the bottom section so um, when I come back each of the villager pockets should be done and the torches should be here and we will get started on the gold farm portion of this build Alright ladies and gentlemen, the villager pockets are done. You can see two there, and then another one there, and another one there, and the torches are in place. So now it's time to build some portals. So let us let me show you the arrangement for them, and then we'll build one, and then I will cut. Okay? So we're going to start one back from this wall and we're going to do that on both sides and what I'm doing here is I'm putting glowstone in the corners you can use obsidian or dirt or whatever you wish um, I just use glowstone because it does happen to look a little better in my opinion and it provides a little bit of light to keep things from spawning that we don't want spawning so we're going to go back leave a gap of one Okay and now so that that's four a gap of one in between each one and then we're gonna skip two okay and then back to skipping one so this is the arrangement you should have eight total four will have one gap in between the other four will have one gap in between and between the two sets there's going to be two let's complete this on the other side there we go and just to uh, and then now what we'll do is we will get this one started right here and this should be 18 now this portal size is only available in 1.7 okay so if you were attempting to build this particular design in anything earlier, then it will not be available. Okay, now you're going to go up 21. I have pre-calculated this. I put a block right where I needed. There we go. And we're going to come across 18 on the top. too low on that one okay and we will come back down it's a little bit easier to come up all right then along
along the edge we're going to put a series of trap doors now uh, the reason you want to do this is because the pigmen will not walk off the edge of that obsidian platform knowingly okay so the trap door makes them think that there is actually a block that they can walk onto but the trap door is open and so they will fall down into the water trap all right so we're gonna do this seven more times um, including the trap doors and I will bring you back once that is done all right the portals are done there's a couple of other pieces of housekeeping to do on the top you either want to put a torch or make it non spawnable somehow by putting like half slabs or glass or something like that but we don't want anything else spawning up here Oh, maybe you do but uh, I prefer to keep it just to the mobs that should come out of this farm the next thing we need to do is fill in these middle portals and that's pretty simple just like that a couple of pieces of obsidian in the middle okay and that's now a valid portal and if you will note there on the bottom the pigmen will see these two right here as valid spots to walk if they're coming out of this portal okay now we don't want them coming out of this portal or this side right so what we're gonna do is just fill this in with glass really you don't need to go all the way up just a couple to keep them from jumping and that should be sufficient okay we want them just going one direction okay so we'll do that the next thing we need to do is put blocks in in each of these um, pockets here and then we want to go up two again same reason we don't want them jumping out okay and so I'm going to do that all the way around okay and I will bring you back when that is done all right the walls are up so that the pigmen will have no place to go except down into the water trap so the gold farm superstructure is done we're not going to light this these portals yet we're going to do that a little bit after we fill in the villager pockets but uh, what we need to do now is we need to do the collection mechanism so we're going to knock one hole out okay this is just to give us a rough idea of where to put the drop chute okay so I use glass you can use whatever you wish but uh, we're gonna line the water the blocks that are underneath the water we're gonna line that too wide and we're gonna go to a level of 25 which I have pre-calculated Okay. And that's what we want to do. We want to fill in the chute all the way down 25 and then I will come back um, and show you the rest once that is done. Alright ladies and gentlemen, I have filled in the glass chute down to this block, but what we actually want to do is put our crusher for the iron columns at this level right here. Okay. So what we're going to do is take a solid block, and it must be a solid block. It cannot be glass. And we're going to put one right there, okay? And then behind that solid block, we're going to go back a couple. And then we need to put a sticky piston facing towards it so that when the piston is extended, this block comes into the chamber here, and that will take care of the iron golem. Now, the next thing we need to do is put in the tripwire hooks and so you have to have a solid block for the 
hooks to go on to. Okay, one on each side, and then string in between. Not there. All right. You see now that I'm in the string, it is extending the piston. That is exactly what we want. Okay. Now, what we can do is fill in a little bit here. And then we'll go down to the next level. And we want to pull in our dispensers. We're done with the tripwire hooks. And we want to put the dispensers. Actually, we're going to go down one lower. Because we want the dispensers on the level with the hoppers. And the hoppers are two or three, three below. So dispensers go here. We want them pointing into the block above the hoppers, rather. Like that. Okay, and then let's fill in our chamber here. All right, next up, we need to start the collection process, and we'll just pick a side to go into. Okay, so I much prefer going into one per, uh, over to the side rather than to the front so what we're gonna do is come down one okay because we don't want a series of hoppers going under the dispensers there and we want to face all of the hoppers into this one okay now I've left myself a little room there Okay, so if you look here, all of the hoppers are facing into this hopper, which is facing down. And then we'll have this hopper coming out right here. And we'll go out just a little bit. Okay. Now we're not going to do the full sorting system. This is just to give me a little bit of room. Okay. Now, what we need to do, the, the items are going to travel along this hopper line. Okay. So what we're going to do, you don't have to do this. I just need a little bit of a platform. Okay. do is come behind this set of hoppers okay we actually want to put a comparator here facing out and then what we're gonna do is put a, com a hopper facing into this comparator hopper in there don't want that in this hopper what we need are some eggs okay specifically you'll need one in each slot okay and that's going to sort out any eggs that happen to come into the system okay now we didn't lock it so that's a bit of a problem let's finish up the sorter first okay so the way to do that is we want we need a block on top and then we're gonna stair step down Okay, 
and then we'll put we need another block here and we'll want a repeater with no ticks facing into this block here and then what we'll do is put a torch right here okay and that is going to lock the hopper that comes right here so uh, that will give us the sorting for the egg but it will give us the next piece as well so make sure we just do that okay now the next thing we need to do is we need to put in the pulse for firing off these dispensers so what you do is you put a solid block on the dispenser that is closest to the back okay and then what we'll do is we'll take these half slabs we still need the repeaters we don't need that anymore and I just use half slabs because they don't conduct redstone current we'll put a redstone dot there and the same thing here Okay, now into this solid block, we're going to put a repeater, no ticks, it's the default, and this will make sure that we power that solid block, which will power that piston, and then the power is going to continue into this piece of redstone dust, which will power this dispenser as well. Okay. So now we're going to come around here, 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 here. Redstone dust on all of these. And we're going to pull a signal off of this one right here. Okay. When the, when an egg goes through, we'll do a redstone repeater and dust. And then what, we're, what we need to do is stair step up. the repeater will make sure that the signal is strong enough and we'll do a quick test by way of so hopefully that one should work yep and there we go. That is the chicken jockey portion of the farm. Now, we don't want uh, these eggs just collecting in here, right? So we should probably fill out a little bit of a chest situation. Okay. And so that's what we'll do. To get these two together, we'll need trap chests and regular chests. Okay. And we'll just put a hopper in. And this thing is currently locked, so, uh, so that won't work so much. And passed on through and then what we want to do we'll just add a couple more right there and hoppers on down running into each one and we can get rid of this extra line and that is pretty much the farm done okay as far as the collection goes so now that the collection is done and the overall superstructure is done, let's get ready to set everything to go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we get started, I almost forgot, we'll need to put at least one flint and steel into each of these dispensers because we want to make sure that whichever 
block the chicken jockey happens to land on, that particular block gets set on fire. So um, there we go. Now in my multiplayer series I went ahead and put all nine in so I am not going to need to fill that up for some time but here it's sufficient just to do the one. So let's go up and finish this farm. What you're going to need is four villagers in each pocket. Okay, that's easy in creative. It's a little more difficult in survival, but you will need to transport at least four villagers into each pocket. Now you can do that currently by just getting two and making sure they can breed and multiply and then transport them. But um, for now, um, I'm just going to put in four and the a tutorial that I link from Docm77 goes into more detail about how to do that. Okay, so there's four. You hear them start, start going. We want to do this as quick as possible, otherwise they're going to start breeding in those pockets. And we don't want that to happen because we want to make sure that the system is completely centered. All right, so the villagers are in place, and I had talked about capping it off earlier, and that's what we want to do. We just take some glass and put it in there. All right, and each of the roofs are done. Before we light these portals, we also need to knock out these blocks because with the villagers in place Minecraft will then say hey this is a village and it will start producing iron golems. The next piece of, of the farm we need to do is we need to light all of these portals so let's just take care of that And then the other thing, as you can see the pigment have started, is you will need to have a spot where you can sit and go AFK for a little bit. And I just do one right here at the center. That is less than 32 blocks from each of the portals, the, the bottom of the portals rather. And that will make sure that the pigmen will move. Okay. And there we go, we're starting to get some pigment drops. And uh, we should get an iron golem sometime soon. But that is the farm all done. There we go, we're already getting drops. So that is the iron and gold farm combination. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you really enjoyed, feel free to subscribe. As always, I do invite your questions, comments, and suggestions, and I do thank you for watching. I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.